It's terrific to be with you here today. We all know that there are some magical places in the world, and it's clear that Hog Island is a magical place. Hog Island is true north for Audubon. It always has been. When we look at our compass, and we try to get our bearings, and we look at the stars of ornithology, and the wellhead of Audubon's intellectual property, and its place in the world, we see Hog Island. So it's just been an enormous treat for me to come to Hog Island. And when you're thinking about making a gift to a place like Hog Island, it is an extraordinarily selfless act that we ask you to commit, that you choose to commit, in a very selfish culture. You're not online, you're not ordering something, you're not giving them your security code, and it's not delivered in two days. That in fact, you're being asked to make an investment so that when people come here 75 years from now, that they have the same history around Hog Island. And the idea of making selfless acts in this culture, it's almost counterintuitive. So seeing history and hearing the history around Hog Island, it's so moving, and it really does come down to that, to being willing to make an investment in something that in all likelihood you're not going to see, but other people are going to get a chance to see. So that struck me as it really is a special mission that Hog Island has to create the people who are civic blue. These are the people who are not the people who are bowling along, as Robert Putnam talks about, but these are the people who go out in the community and organize, and now increasingly on the internet, and do land, and take care of land use issues in communities, and take care of birds, and employ Audubon at home programs in their backyards, and help create healthier habitats for their kids, and for birds at the same time. So the fact that Hog Island is that central place to train those leaders is a role that no other place in Audubon fills. I'm also really struck in hearing your stories about how important it is that Audubon has come back to birds as its central defining characteristic. That in fact, there's this great story that the public is just, that you know, but when we tell people, it's news to a lot of folks. And I've had this opportunity, and I've had to learn this story because I'm not a birder, at least I wasn't 11 months ago. But as I tell people, and I remember the first time I told my mother that I was going to work for Audubon, she really honestly did say, that's terrific, hon. That's a car company, isn't it? Audubon. It has been disappointing, but it's true. And I said, well, not exactly, Mom. And so then, within a month or so, after doing a loop around Audubon World, I was on the road for my first month, I said, wait, wait, here's the story. So the reporter in me put together this story with the generous help of a lot of people who already knew it and just sort of shared it with me. There are four superhighways in the sky that run north and south, up and down the hemisphere. And underneath those four superhighways in the sky, there are um, rest stops and there are homes. We call them important bird areas. And when you connect those geographies, what you have is the web of biodiversity that connects uh, America's richest natural heritage. And birds lead us to that work. And so we're in the middle of doing a new strategic plan at Audubon that focuses on the most important species and the most important habitat uh, along the four flyways, and that it brings all of our education work, all of our tremendous centers with a million visitors a year, all of our chapters, and everybody can hook into that flyway wherever they are in the country. And what I heard yesterday from 40 chapter leaders was, we want a piece of that action. We want, we want to sign. The first person, the first comment that came from the, the room was, we want a sign outside of our, our town's, our, our city's limits that says, we're a part of the Atlantic Flyway, we're a chapter, and we're part of National Audubon Society. And to hear that kind of enthusiasm for the connection between chapters and National Audubon Society, that's news in the Audubon world, and you know that, and I know that. So this concept of bringing Audubon back to a conservation focus and all of our efforts, whether they're in school education,
location, whether they're centers, whether they are Audubon at home for people working in their backyard, whether it's the Urban Oasis program, all the work that Audubon does now is going to be focused back through the thing that makes Audubon Audubon and differentiates us from other groups, and that's magnificent birds. Charismatic birds that people just love. So that leads me to my last thoughts, which would be what happens here? The stories that I've heard from you, you know, I've heard the details about the camps and the luxurious um, suites and the accommodation, <laughs> running water most of the time. Uh, heard all those stories, but really what it comes down to for me is that this is a place where a remarkable thing happens in 2011. People listen to each other. They actually listen to each other. They are inspired by one another. Heard leaders tell me yesterday, I leave here and I feel hope. Because after all, that's what we do in Audubon. We are in the hope business. And this is a place where people can come to feel recharged. And when I hear Sally Jeffords tell me about the fact that her son Sam really found himself and found his niche in the world at um, Hog Island, at this camp, um, then I know that this camp is, is, is about love, too. That people who find each other here do develop an affection for each other. They do develop a love for birds and a love for nature. And it is a way for people to connect. It's a powerful thing. So, Hog Island represents all of that to me. It's, it is our true north because of the work that it produces, but I think it's our true north because it embodies why it is that people come to nature and why they really want to be a part of Audubon for, their, for a lifetime. So, I hope you have a terrific time here. I don't know about you, but I'm going to eat all the lobster I can get. <laughs> uh, and I want to hear more of your stories over the next uh, couple of hours. Thank you for coming. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to spend a little bit of time with you. Have a great time here.